hello friends how you guys doing welcome back to the channel thank you so much for tuning in and for watching my video so in today's video i will be telling you guys some of the experiences like the things i did when i first came to the uk and just kind of giving you all the gist so if you see my face for the first time i am glad on here i make like inspirational video then i will be jotting my uk experiences for you guys if you know you like this kind of content and you are not subscribed to the channel sis what are you waiting for or brother what are you waiting for please go ahead and subscribe and don't forget to hit your notification bell please do not forget to give this video a massive thumbs up as it helps push my content up the ladder if you kind of push this content up a little bit for other people to kind of see the content if you see what i mean so this is how it works here on youtube i don't want to ramble too much guys let's dive right into it so sis here yeah, this is where the gist starts again <laughs> So the first place I stayed when I came to the UK was Hampton Court. So if you live in the UK, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. It was Hampton Court. The Thames River was not far from where I was staying. It's just like one street away. So I used to do a lot of uh, river walk. When I went to the Thames, and they were like, oh, this is the Thames River. It didn't mean, mean anything to me that oh, apparently it runs from here to central London. Then I was just like, oh, really? Do you know? And the area himself was stunning, stunning. I used to live in Suleri in Lagos. And from Suleri moving to like Hamtu Court in a really nice, uh, I don't even know how to say it, in a really nice area like that, it was just like astonishing. Well, when I came, then I said, oh, for dinner, we're going to have fish and chips. Then I was just like, oh, where is fish and chips? They said, oh, it's fish. I was thinking, okay, maybe like my pepper soup or the kind of fish that we used to do. So I think we actually went to the fish and chip uh, restaurants. Fish and chip restaurants. Hey, oh Lord, we shall know meal. How this one go come be? So we went there. I saw some, everybody was like kind of um, Caucasian. Sit, sit down. Then I sat and they brought uh, the fish with a batter. Hey, I said, how can they chop this one? Honestly, the, how are they chop one? I couldn't eat the butter with the fish. Oh. I have to take the butter off. You know, the butter, I have to take it off. Take it off. The chips was there. We know we do chips before anyway. Then I ate the fish. The fish was so bland. Like, oh. I say, and you see all these people are happy about fish and chips. And this fish was so bland. Like, that then, no. Oh, I was not eating it. I was just, uh, I didn't like, mm, it's not my cup of tea. So anyway, the fish and chip was somehow just like, I really struggled to eat the fish and chip. I think I ate more of the chips than the fish because the fish is not the way I usually eat fish. And they noticed that I wasn't drinking the normal tap water. Then I was drinking like kind of lukewarm water because I could not even drink the water from the tap, guys. I'm not kidding you guys. So what I used to do then, I'll boil the water a little bit and pour it in my cup because the water that comes from the tap is even colder than the water that comes from the fridge in Nigeria. I'm not lying to you. <laughs> I'm not lying to you guys. It was so cold. I couldn't drink no more cold water from the tap. This is just a normal cold water. As if it just came from the freezer. Just about to, to, to be frozen. I couldn't even drink it. I was just like, I was really like, this little thing I was struggling. I couldn't then as a new arrival you know the next thing i was doing again i would just take the house uh, landline i will be calling direct bt bt british telecom i will take the landline i was calling direct to nigeria just with my friends my family like saying how wonderful england was how pretty everything i was just like just like that whoo i think Everybody was just like a little bit calm because this is a first experience. I kind of lived everything and you no, know, everything was cool. I think the next day, which is like a Sunday, because that Saturday I came, we couldn't really do much. So we had dinner, I think on Sunday of it, then we went to Kingston. So Kingston was our local high street. So I went to Mark and Spencer. I went to buy coats. The coat I bought from Mark and Spencer, I still have that coat up to now i was thinking it's here but it's now i still have that coat now and i went to there's this shop i went to i always remember the shop. i went to buy trench coat as well i think i bought like three things really nice beautiful coat like cashmere coat from mark and spencer really nice i went i bought some um boots and um, yeah just some things to make me feel comfortable because i was getting so so cold and then um, afterwards 
uh, we came back home. Kingston was lovely. You know, Bento's is amazing. I still love uh, Kingston a lot because that is just like my favorite high street, honestly. And we went to Bento's. Bento is huge, huge. Everything is shiny, beautiful. We went to John Lewis. I love Kingston. I understood that that river I saw that was in my area run to Kingston as well. So we went for a walk by the river. Then I saw some swans. Swans are so gorgeous. So the swans are beautiful. Oh, everything. Oh my God. England, yeah. I was just like, England is so nice. Everything England was so nice. So I have my coat. I was feeling a little bit comfortable. And uh, day four, so I kind of chilled, chilled out a little bit at home. And it was really lovely. I was loving my stay, but the code, yeah, hmm. the code was disciplining me. I could not understand that code. I keep thinking, how can it be sunny outside and it will still be so cold? I could, I was just like, ah, now, wow. Anyway, uh, I went to London Eye, I think the day five, after I had my coat and everything, we went to London Eye, London, we hopped on the train to London, London was beautiful, you know, went to London Eye, I went on the, the thing, it was really is nice, and then eventually, the, like the Thames River, this is the Thames River that ran, that's the river that is in our area, and the beauties in London is beautiful, I walk along the south bank of the river, I, like this is the first time of me leaving Nigeria to this country and seeing all this wonderful thing. The excitement was amazing. I was just like, oh wow, this is so beautiful. Everything was just mind blowing. We went for lunch. It was magnificent. It was so, so nice. And even me hopping on the train for the first time was another thing as well for me. It was a big thing because that was the first time I've been on the train because we don't really have like then the train network is not as good as what we what we have now in nigeria as no and it's very rare but here in england trains everywhere and i went on the underground <laughs> i went on the underground as well so they're like oh there's underground i was just like what if you're on the ground they're like ah i have not been then i took the escalator even some will take you down down there i said god is eh, god is wonderful you people people can't still oh you people can't still wonderful this is wonderful I was just like, wow, all these experiences, all these oyster cards and uh, things like that. And then we came back from London. Then we had like a big night coming, like we're going to the theater. And I thought I'm going to do my hair. So I found a place in Serbitin. So this place is Serbitin. You know, now, you know the way we usually just go to Nigeria salon. You just sit down, you just tell them to do the hair. So that's how I told them. I said, I want to do this hair. I picked some of their hair. So they installed it. I didn't like the, the hair that they did. You know when the when the little feather thing was like they did the hair, and you see all this little flyaway hair everywhere on top of my head, and I paid for the installment, the wig and everything. I think it was around um two hundred or three hundred. At that time, I was just like, mm, it's two hundred pounds. Mm. When I got home, when I did the calculation to Naira, I said, eh, they played me four one nine, eh. That was the first time I said, hey, yeah, man, the England is nowhere you come and do hell. It's so expensive. And then it's like all this Yankee hair. It's not like the kind of hair that we have today. Do you know? Anyway, then I now went to the theater. I went to see Fountain of the Opera at the theater. Oh, it was beautiful. Oh, the Fountain of the Opera. I said, oh my God, that was so nice. So we did the theater. Came back home. And uh, I think by the day, day six or something, I was getting so cold. It just like everything was amazing, but the cold was just stay too much for me to handle. I could not understand how a country would be so cold. Indoor, I will put the thermostat at 30 degree, and I will still be freezing cold. I will still be cold. We went to Hamto Cold Palace because it's just close to our house. Hamto Cold Palace was so beautiful, so nice. So I did everything, went to the garden because in the winter there you can go to the garden for free. So oh, it was just like I say, eh? So see palace, just near where they stay, see people, the restaurants, the cafe. Another thing that caught me off guard is when it started getting dark around 3.30 in the middle of winter. So when I look at my channel, I'm like, ah, it don't dark. I say, huh? Eh, it's dark. 
I say, wow, I have no experience that, you know, like in school, we will study things like this, but experiencing it real life, it was quite experienced. Everything was like, everything was new to me. Like, oh my God, I see she, everywhere is dark. I was actually seeing myself going back to Lagos again. I thought it was a little bit, a little bit quiet. The building, you don't see people. You don't really, mm, you don't really see people. If you don't have friends, you could be on your own. And it's so, it's just the quietness, the cold and everything. So I think they turn, I think I was just like, mm, I'm going back now. Even though everything was fantastic, wow. They turn, I was just, mm. so anyway, I went back to Nigeria. So even me going back to Nigeria, yeah. I was going to go tell my friends, my sister, like how UK was. I took some photo. So what? <clears throat> This is how I flew back. And I went, I flew back, got back to my place in Lagos. Then I had a good old sleep. Slept so well. Suddenly, yeah, even when I came after 10 days, ah, ah, my friends were like, oh my God, even my relative, they were like, ah, you look fresh. You look really, really nice. And so they were like, ah, so you came back. You just go back, you just went to UK and you just tell the people that you are coming back and you really came back. I said, I came back now. I came back. I came back. We fight to live another day, isn't it? I came back. So a lot of people were giving me hard time for coming back. They were like, you could have run away. You could have done this. I said, run away to where? We run away. We are not get mama, get papa. I not get sister. I'll just run away like that. Just to think, uh, like run to where? I'm not running away. Oh. I, went, I came back. I said, now nah, I have visa. If I go back again, I give them good reason. And I have six months visa. I can always go back again and go find. So this is where I am going to come back to you guys and continue the video. So one thing I'm going to say, yeah, you know, even when I came back to Nigeria, a lot of people were like, you could have run away. Even when I went to Benin, to my state, and I even took, took some photos with me. And you see, some people, they didn't believe me. Even some of my good friends, they were like, ah, no, no, no. I have to whoop, whoop out my photos to say, this is where I've been. They were like, ah, now what for you? Like, if you want to do something, you will just do it. How can you go abroad and you, you did not run away? Like today, yeah, the inspirational message I'm going to share, yeah, is you could have run away. Maybe I could have run away. Maybe I'm not going to be in the system and things like that. But I don't know what my life is would have turned out to be it's easy to run away sometimes but running away not establishing your foundation is another thing i could run away maybe going from one place to another like being like homeless that was not the kind of life i was living in nigeria so why should i come to another man's land and start living like that you know even when i was in nigeria at least i have a foundation if you want to do something, do it the right way. Build a system, build a foundation that you can build little by little bit. You will get there. Sometimes it takes slow. Sometimes it's very slow. It becomes very frustrating. But that does not mean that you should completely just do it the wrong way or do it another kind of way. I came back because I was not kind of settling in. I love the country. It's beautiful. And the people I met on the way when I was in England, they were even saying to me that, oh, you will even enjoy it more in spring. So I was even looking forward to springtime. You know, I try to do things the right way. And um, yeah, I'm just letting you know, when I went back to Nigeria, the hard time I got of not running away was another another level. They say, oh, they go put sugar for a mouth. We could just come spit and come out. That was the comment I was getting. Anyway, in my next video, we will continue from how what i did again to come back what make me come back my idea behind everything that, that i've been to england so this will be in the next video thank you so much if you know you enjoyed the story and you have not subscribed please go ahead give this video a massive thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel bye bye